In lesson 6, we're looking at equations with decimal numbers and consecutive integer word problems. The first example is a equation that has many decimals. Okay, so what we'll need to do is remove the decimals. And since this has 1, 2, 3 decimals after um, our decimal point, that one has the most numbers after the decimal point. So what we're going to do is multiply our entire equation by 1,000. And that simply moves the decimal to the right three places. So I'll have 3 x plus 400 equals 2,050. Okay, and then we can go ahead and solve for x. So I'll subtract 400. So I have 3x equals 1,650. And then just divide both sides by 3. So x equals 550, and that's how to. The second example on lesson 6 is a word problem where we're using decimals to find out the total number of teachers. So let's read through the problem and then write down our equation. The students found that 0.015 of the teachers were either brave or completely fearless if 300 teachers fell into one of these categories how many teachers were there in all so there were 0.015 of the total teachers that were brave or fearless so that would be 0.015 times the total number of teachers, and there were 300 that fell into one of these categories, should be an S in there, these categories, that would be equal to 300. And then we simply need to divide both sides by 0.015. So the total number of teachers is 20,000 teachers. And we found the total number of teachers. Okay, example 3 in Lesson 6 is a, a word problem that we'll read through. Um, an analysis of the old woman's utterances showed that 0.932 were vaticinal if she spoke 2,000 times during the period in question how many utterances were not vaticinal. Now first of all, vaticinal means prophet-like or of a prophetic nature. So um, just wanted to let you guys know that's not a word we normally use. <coughs> But just dealing with the numbers here, so 0 0.932 were vitesinal. And we're actually looking for how many were not vitesinal. So we need to subtract 0 0.932 from 1. Now that would give us uh, 0 0.068. And then this number is what we're going to multiply by the 2,000 to find out how many were not vitesinal. And that would give us 136. The fourth example in Lesson 6 is a consecutive integer problem. This time we're looking at consecutive even integers. 
and we need to find three of them. So let's read through the problem and see how we need to set up our equation. Find three consecutive even integers such that five times the sum of the first and third is 16 greater than nine times the second. So first of all, for our three consecutive even integers, I'm going to set up n, n plus two and n plus four, because if they're consecutive even integers, they're going to be going by twos. So first, second, and third. And it would be the same way if it was um, odd integers. You would also go by twos. Okay, so this will kind of help us keep things lined up. And it helps us remember that not only are we finding one number, we're also finding the second and third ones after that. So we have find three consecutive even integers such that five times the sum of the first and third. So the sum of the first and third, that would be n plus n plus four. And it was five times that sum, so I'm gonna put that parentheses with five on the outside. And it says is 16 greater than nine times the second. So is is equals and then 9 times the second, so 9 times n plus 2, and is 16 greater, so I'll need to add 16 to that. Right? Now I'm going to go ahead and simplify inside the parenthesis here, so 5 times 2n plus 4, and this side, um, I'll go ahead and distribute the 9, so 9n plus 18 plus 16. Okay, then I can go on my next step and distribute the 5, just like I did the 9, so 5 times 2n is 10, 5 times 4 is 20, and then I'll add 18 plus 16, so that'll be plus 34. Right, then I can subtract 9n and subtract 20. So I'll have n equals 14. Okay, so I have my first consecutive even integer, but I still need the second and third. <coughs> so there'll be 16 and 18. So I've got my three consecutive even integers. The fifth and last example in lesson six is a consecutive integer problem. This time it's not even or odd, it's just consecutive integers. Okay, so let's look through it or read through the problem and then see how we need to set it up. Find four consecutive integers such that five times the sum of the first and fourth is one greater than eight times the third. Okay, this time we have four consecutive integers, so I'm going to have n, n plus 1, n plus 2, and n plus 3. Since they're just consecutive, we just go up by 1 this time. So this will be my first, second, third, and fourth. That way I won't or forget the last three numbers after I solve for n. Okay, then let's set this up. Okay, um, four consecutive integers such that five times the sum of the first and fourth. All right, so five times the sum, so five parentheses, the first and fourth, n plus n plus three is, that would be equal sign, one greater than eight times the third, so. 8 times the third is 8 times, in parentheses, n plus 2, and then plus 1, <coughs> since it's 1 greater. Then we'll simplify inside the parentheses, so 5 times 2n plus 3, and I'll go ahead and distribute the 8. Right, then I'll distribute the 5. Thank you. 
and I'll combine the 16 and 1 together because they're like terms. Okay, and now I'll get my ins on one side and my constants on the other. So I'm going to subtract 8 in on the left and then subtract 15 on the right. So 2 in equals 2. Then I just need to divide both sides by 2, and n equals 1. So my first number is 1, second is 2, third is 3, and fourth is 4. And we found our four consecutive integers.